I really believe that all of that came from just being true to myself and also being willing to give back and being willing to let go. What we say all the time, let go, let God. Like instead of making it a barrier, you know, really being true to yourself and, and following that passion and just going where that passion leads you, you know. It was that moment where I actually decided I'm going to go all in on baseball again, and I'm going to do it on the coaching side. And I resigned from the from that position, you know, put in my notice. Um, that The summer was coming up, and I said, I'm just going to coach this whole summer. I'm going to coach. I'm going to, like, do little camps. I'm going to, you know, work. With, if it's one kid, if it's 10 kids, whatever, I'm going to work with them. I'm going to really just, like, take on this coaching role. And later that summer, it was, it was, uh, I never forget, it was hurricane season. And a, a great friend of mine who we actually played together, we were roommates with the Atlanta Braves organization. He, he actually lives in the Bahamas. It, actually, a hurricane had just hit the Bahamas. So I was texting him kind of throughout. And, you know, it took a couple of days for him to get back to me, let me know everything was good. And then he says, yeah, man, we're all good. Thanks for checking. Uh, by the way, what do you think about getting back into pro ball? And I'm like, dang, like, so I text him back. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm interested, man. Like, what, you know, what's going on? At this time, I have no idea, like, that he's even coaching in pro ball at this time. I, I just thought he was coaching in the Bahamas or whatever. He said, well, cool, let's talk. Turns out he, he was working for a major league organization and was basically offering me a position. And <laughs> yeah, he was like, Hey man, like, you know, of course we play together. I know, I know what you could bring to the table. Like I'm in this position now. This was, this is what I would love for you to do. Like, let's, let's talk. And the crazy thing is that kind of fell through because he got promoted to the major leagues. He was back in the major leagues as, as a uh, first base coach. But after that, I started getting calls from other organizations and next thing I know, I end up taking a position with the Chicago White Sox organization. So, yeah. you know, and, and it's like, I really believe that all of that came from just being true to myself and also being willing to give back and being willing to, to kind of like let go, right? Like, like what we say all the time, let go, let God. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what it comes down to. Like, instead of making it a barrier, you know, really being true to yourself and, and following that passion and just going where that passion kind of leads you, you know? Yeah. It sounds like um, that moment when you just said, I'm going to follow everything that has to do with baseball and yeah. resign from this job. That's when it seemed like just God responded. So sometimes yeah. it's like, just take that leap. Yep. And a little bit of a leap and then, yep. you know, let God or the universe, whatever everybody believes in. Right, <laughs> right. Take the rest. Just listening to that is super inspiring for me and keeps me remembering to just find a way to keep passion in my life. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. I would like to know if you have any tips or any stories about how you balanced love and relationship in a family with this. Mm -hmm. passion of baseball that you had and traveling and doing all this stuff and I know your yeah. wife does a lot too and has to travel yeah. so yeah. how did that balance and how did that work <laughs> that is it, it's always a work in progress to be honest that's the thing about sports about like you know entertainment industry like you kind of have to go where they want you to go and that was part of my hesitation initially in, in trying to like go right into coaching after playing um, because, you know, that lifestyle is not easy. I would say like communication is, is huge, right? Like communication, understanding what their wants and needs are being as honest as we can be too, and try to know each other as, as best as possible and, and never feel like you're hindering the other person from pursuing something that they want just because it may be difficult. Even this year, like I'm fortunate enough to be, I, I coach close to home our development teams in player development with with the White Sox organization they're all close to Charlotte so like that was it was it was just a great great situation for me because I know a lot of guys that are you know clear across the country from where they live but 
I was still an hour and a half away and I was kind of coming back and forth to, you know, be with the family on a night and then head back out the next morning and, and just kind of make it work over the course of a six month period. And the great thing about being a coach, you go hard for like six months and then you're off for, for six months or like hard for seven, you're off for five. So like, as of right now, I'm, I'm in a, in a great situation to have like a lot of family time and everything, but yeah, doing those months, it's, it's difficult. You're willing to do whatever it takes for that other person when you have love for them, of course, but also you understand their love too. Like know each other, know what, what drives them, know what their passions are, do everything that you can to support, and then trust that they're gonna be as responsible as they can be in that pursuit of, of whatever it is they, they're going after. Mm -hmm. That's good. It sounds like one of the key elements too is your partner being your best friend and communication. Yeah. When you're a best friend to anybody, then you care about what they care about and you make right. sacrifices. So she's a doctor, right? Yeah, yeah, she's a, she's a dermatologist. Um, I guess so. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh. Like, yeah, so we. And a pro baseball player and still had kids and that's some black yeah. excellence too. So I just no, want to back real quick. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. None of this comes with an instruction manual. It's all about learning as you go and, and you find ways to appreciate the journey. I think our biggest lesson has been to really embrace the moment and, and like live in the moment as much as possible. And I think when you do that, it takes a lot of anxiety away. It, it helps you really appreciate the simple things in life and career and even our passions. It's, it's great, but sometimes we get wrapped up in it so much to where we're kind of looking forward, right? We're looking ahead to the next step or we're looking back in the past and saying like, man, I wish I would have done this differently or I, I wish I would do this or that. The, the thing that's guaranteed is the here and now, you know? And really focusing on that, being as, as grateful as we can be for the here and now. And things just tend to unfold as you go, if you do that. Yeah, that's, that's so true. That's something that I practiced, especially last year, mm -hmm. you know, during the pandemic and stuff. And yep. just everything's shifting and relationships and everything's shifting. Yeah. Now I can tell you that I enjoy even just a simple view of a tree and going to the park yeah. and seeing dogs yeah. and stuff like that. And yeah. Just really yeah. enjoying the moment. Yeah. Uh, but it took me so long to get here. Like that just started happening in 2020 right. <laughs> and right. like this year. But if I would have had that mind frame before, then I think things could have been a lot easier. It's okay. We learn as we go, but exactly. it's like, um, it's just so important to enjoy the journey. And as I'm doing this show, I'm just like, hey, slow down. Cause sometimes you want to like jump ahead and do all this right. other stuff and right. just enjoy each bit of it. Okay, so with dance and with um, entertainment industry, mm -hmm. a lot of it is not even so much about our talent but it's about political things or things that we can't really help like the way we look, our skin complexion, et cetera, et cetera. Yep. So do you feel like you had any issues with racism playing bas baseball? Yeah, um, it's definitely part of the game. I think it shows up in, in almost every sport or industry or whatever. I wouldn't say it's exclusive to baseball, but there's definitely things that I, I ran across uh, when, I, when I played, you know, even as a kid. But yeah, like I've, I've played, you know, in front of different fans that would say certain things. And, you know, for me, it was, it was just something that I wouldn't let it affect me too much. If anything, it, it just motivated me even more, you know, it was just kind of like, hey, it is what it is. I, I'm not surprised by it. Um, you know, there were things that I, I even dealt with in, in college, like my teammates were wonderful. Um, but, but even, you know, a few things that I had to talk to the coach about, right? Like, like things that he may or may not have knew he was doing, or, you know, could have been intentional, could have been just a, a bias that, that was there or whatever. But I just think it's going to always be there, you know? Some people really have a, a good understanding of what bias is and they'll do everything that they can to treat everyone as fairly as possible. And then you have a lot of people who don't. But yeah, there's always going to be things that, that pop up that we just have to overcome. I just think that's just part 
is part of our, uh, you know, just our journey in America. You know what I mean? It's a hurdle. It's definitely a hurdle. It's just one of those things that players have to, they have to overcome, you know, and, and like you said, not all the time is it just based off of your, your play or just based of your, your ability. It, it is, it is the decision makers. I think it's their responsibility to block out those biases that may come in um, where they're unfairly evaluating players, you know, like you may see one player and, and he's, either a white American kid or, you know, an international person from Latin America or a black American, can you, can you evaluate them fairly? You know, can you base it solely off of, can this person help us at the major league level? Or, you know, can this person help us in this organization based off of his play? Um, you know, if there are other intangibles, I think that's, that's fair. That's fair game. But race should should not play a factor in that but unfortunately it does a lot yeah um i i really like your mind frame on that because it goes back again to your focus mm -hmm. and all this stuff that probably is not for the faint of heart and it probably would have affected me like all yeah. that stuff just seemed to kind of fly over your head and you're just like i'm just gonna stay focused and that's <laughs> why you got so far you know because you can get stuck in being frustrated by some of the things that are unfair or yeah. you can get better and focus and just pray and keep and keep doing your right. best and yeah. it looks like you did the latter which was <laughs> continue to focus and do your best and, I, and i'll say like it's tough it is it's certainly tough to do it, but what I've learned over the years and what I tell a lot of the, the young kids that I, that I coach, um, you know, even if it's not based off of race, like people always have some type of bias, right? Like they have some, something that that's going to show up. Unfortunately, a lot of times it, it, it does kind of fall along the race lines or, or it falls along pol politics or, mm -hmm. you know, things like that, because it's such a, a big part of, unfortunately just like how we how society has kind of been built right but I think that's why it's so important to be your own critic and be like be your own judge right at the end of the day it's us dictating what is what is success and I think when you when you really get to that point where you're you're focused mostly on on yourself internally you're setting your own standard, you're setting whatever that, that measure of success is, it goes a long way, right? Because then it doesn't matter what this person says or why they made this decision or that decision. Um, trust me, it, it ate me up for years. I would always look back and say, man, if I had just done this differently, or if, man, I had the numbers, like why didn't, why didn't I get this promotion like this guy got that promotion? And ultimately, that's, it's like poison. It prevents us from from moving forward and and it, it goes back to like not being in the moment if we're doing that but mm -hmm. setting our own standard i think is is kind of like a superpower you're you're not worried about the expectations of anyone else you're not worried about their decisions you're truly being your own critic you're being your own uh coach yeah like you're setting your own standard mm -hmm. did you go through any um therapy for any of this stuff or was it just life your therapy man I, and you know my mom like i would say my mom is like my therapist you know yeah. um between between my mom and my wife it's a lot of deep conversations that we've all had um mm -hmm. and i would say you know having any someone in your family that you can kind of lean on a friend that you can lean on goes a long way these are things that my mom ha has said for for years you know like she's even as a kid she's always kind of had this wisdom and this intuition that that has helped me a lot in in my life I certainly appreciate her for that and you know I've always kind of been interested in in different perspectives so my therapy is listening to certain audio books but um yeah it's, it's a lot of things that you learn along the way you realize like man it's really not that big of a deal right like like ultimately we're we're, we're going after things that are external and it's fine. It's, it's fine to, to go after those things, especially if it makes you happy. I, I feel like it all works together. Like if I'm grateful, I'm happy. If I'm happy, I'm grateful. It gives me the right energy to where I can actually attract things to me or attract, you know, attract the right situations to me. 
I would advise anybody just to to literally find the gratitude in every little thing, you know, because every little thing is actually a, a big thing. And and having these these perspectives where you just kind of change how you look at the world, you know, and 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 understand that there is a universe that that is trying to work for you if if you're giving off the right energy, you know. I love that. Yes. Yeah, you know, one of the reasons I asked about um, therapy, number one, is because of your wisdom. But another reason is I've heard some athletes get therapy yeah. here and there, but I don't know if it's like available for everybody Yeah. Um, or what happens. So that was the reason I asked, too. Oh, no, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you asked that because I, I'm glad the mental health thing is in the news a lot more. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I have no problem admitting that I feel, although we, you know, you feel like you're OK, you feel like you're you know, you're able to transition, like, it's a very tough transition to go from playing to even coaching. When you've done something your whole life, and you were, you know, so used to being that person that's in the mix, and like, actually on the field, and playing, and and doing those things, and then you have to make a transition for whatever reason. Even guys who played 20 years and made millions of dollars, they have a tough time transitioning into retirement. You know, so um, it, it is something that's worth like talking to somebody about, you know, whether it's a professional or somebody who can just help you in some kind of way. It's very much worth having those conversations and understanding that you can easily go into, uh, you know, somewhat of a functional, what I like to call a functional depressive state, you know, where you're just like, you think you're okay and you're going about life but things are different, you know, it's, it's just like a big transition that that's not nearly as easy as people think. Yeah. I do want to see if you have any closing words for A, just the general audience or for B, for that person that wants to be a pro baseball player or was, was the little Mikey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you have any advice or closing words for, for any of those people. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to, to both. You know, we all have like talents. We all have passions. We have just something that, that makes us happy and maybe something that we've always held close to our, to our hearts. I think you have to make time for that. As far as we know, you have this life, right? Like, like you have this life. It may be this, this one life. You may have, you know, afterlife or whatever, whatever you believe, but Ultimately, you have this life right here and right now. We see every day, it's not always guaranteed. I, I think if you're, if you're constantly either living for the future or living in the past, um, you're doing yourself a disservice. You know, like you, you should really do everything that you can to live the happiest life that you can, you know, and everybody's circumstances are different. But I, I just say, if, if you're an artist, like make sure you're, you're, putting time toward that you know if you have your your eight to five your nine to five job or whatever find time to to paint or draw or do do whatever you know if if you're a dancer like you paisa um and i I tell i tell my wife the same thing because she she was a dancer too you know and and excellent dancer i have to add that in there excellent thank you you. and and my mom you know even even at I, i try to get her to you know, do things because she, she was a choreographer, you know, and she, and she can still dance. You know, she's 62 years old and can still dance with the best of them. But like making time outside of our daily schedule or, or finding a way to loop it into your daily schedule because it, it literally feeds your soul, you know, and I think you have to continue to do that as much as you can. If you want to pursue that beyond like as a career or whatever, then, then great. But at least find a way to, to keep it in your life. It, it, it really can, can just boost that, that happiness and, and keep things clear, you know? Um, for anyone who's like going after something in sports in general, I, you know, cause of, of course you have the baseball audience, but, but like just sports in general, definitely do everything that you can to be the best player you can be at your sport. Don't compete against the next person. Just like literally be the best you can be. And a lot of times that can, that can, you know, get you noticed or, or help you get to where you want to be. 
so many of us, you know, we get caught up in trying to compete against the next person. And that's, it's just kind of a low level of, of thinking. Um, I say, do everything that you can to just be your best self, be the best shooter you can be if, if it's in basketball, be the best hitter in, in, in uh, field that you can be if it's baseball, if it's golf or tennis, whatever, like focus on yourself, you know, focus, focus on yourself, focus on, on um, things that can, that can help you be the best player you can be and also the best person you can be off the field. Oh man, that's so perfect. Thank you so much, Michael. Yeah, I'm ending this very inspired. So <laughs> I yeah. have so many cool things to digest. So I appreciate you sharing and making time with the kids and yeah, everything yeah. else going on. Like you're really <laughs> a lot. So it was cool to read. No, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for having me. I, I appreciate it. I love, love what you're doing with your show. Um, I certainly wish you all the best and, and, you know, I appreciate your friendship all these years too. Oh, thank you so much and send your family love and, um, just know that you're going to inspire many with this interview. So thank you so much. Thank you, Paisa. Bye. Bye.